Hello there friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at my general purpose rifle build. This rifle started as a PSA Freedom Upper I snagged on a daily deal for 169 bucks, but has since turned into my go-to rifle. I spent the last year fine-tuning the attachments on this rifle and I'd like to share it with you guys. Let's take a closer look at some of my favorite parts about this build before hitting the range with it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so stoked you're choosing to share your time with me. If you enjoy my content so far, leave a like and comment down below. I try to respond to everyone I can and I'd love to chat with you. Also, please subscribe and share it with your friends. I do want to take an extra second and say a heartfelt thank you to the 5,000 of you that have already subbed to me. I am eternally grateful for your support and I'm very thankful for you. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as well. I post tons of photo content over there as well as behind the scenes video content that never makes it over here to YouTube. In a moment, we'll take a closer look at this GPR, but before we do, I'd like to discuss my professional relationship with the many companies involved in this build. The first is Lead and Steel. They make the red dot I currently have mounted on here. I reached out to them because I wanted to try their unique take on a large format red dot, and they were kind enough to send one over for me to check out as long as I told you guys what I thought of it, good or bad. And Welltool. Welltool was kind enough to send over a couple of their weapon lights for me to check out, and I'll be doing another video that deep dives into those. The main three features I look for in a GPR are, one, the ability to engage targets from zero to 100 yards quickly, two, the ability to engage targets beyond 100 meters accurately, and finally, three, the ability to effectively ID and engage targets at night with or without nods. This build covers all those bases and then some. There are a few components where I went all out and a couple other components where I went with a more budget option. I'll try to explain my reasoning as we go over this build. First up, let's talk about barrel length. You know, it's all about finding that sweet spot between maneuverability and performance. That's why I went with a 16 inch barrel on this build. It strikes a pretty solid balance, giving me pretty great accuracy and velocity without being overly cumbersome. The difference between a 14.7 and a 16 inch barrel in practice is pretty minimal, so I figured I'd capitalize on the extra velocity where I could. Whether you're engaging targets at a distance or clearing rooms, this barrel length is totally manageable. Again, it's not going to clear rooms as easy as a 10.5 or a 9mm PDW, but it's also going to be able to reach out further than they could. PSA had an insane deal where these Freedom Uppers were 169 bucks, and I couldn't resist. I had been wanting to do a carbine length Cas V build with the new M-Lock version VL Tor was offering. I've used their classic Cas V EL on my 10.5 inch AR pistol for the last few years and I've loved it. In this fixed front sight post carbine length gas system, PSA upper was a great base. This is easily the most budget friendly choice of my whole build. My plan was to swap out the barrel, but I've been really impressed with its accuracy so far so I have no plan to swap it out for now. I am aware that I may wear it out a little faster than my chrome line barrels, but if I ever hit that point, that's going to mean I've been shooting a ton and how mad could I really be then? I've always had great luck with stag rifles and parts and decided to go with their nitride bolt carrier group with this build as well. I'm running a stag BCG in my pistol right here, as well as in a few other builds over the years. They simply work and that's what I need out of a bolt carrier group. My initial infatuation with the Cas V handguards came from seeing these picks as a kid. The Navy was issuing them in the 2000s to the EOD teams and I thought they were such a vibe. They wanted something that they could install in the field without needing a gunsmith or special tools that would free float the barrel, give them a monolithic upper, and add a ton of attachment points for accessories. The early Cas V uses a fixed attachment point with modular Picatinny rail slots, whereas this new version uses M-Lock. Because the Cas V piggybacks on top of your current upper receiver rail, it also adds about a half inch of height to the rail. This is a non-issue for me as I prefer my optics sky high anyhow. As you can see, I paired my Cas V setup with the Unity Fast Riser and flipped center magnifier mount to get the optics center line to a 2.72 height. I found this height to be super comfortable to shoot at whether in full kit or not. The added height over bore is something you need to consider and train for, but once you know your holds it's an easy adjustment, especially with circle dot optics. Having a 100 yard zero means that the larger outer ring serves as my impact point any time a target is within 25 yards. The LP1 is no exception. You can see here by aiming using the center dot at about 15 yards that there is about 4 inches of height over bore to account for with this setup. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, 
Let's try that same build drill, but using the bottom hash mark of the circle dot as my point of aim instead. Now that we've accounted for hide over bore, by aiming at the bottom ring of the circle dot. Look at that. Well, if it would focus. So if you're gonna be running higher optics like I do, make sure to learn your holds. You're responsible for every round that leaves your barrel. The Ape Defense one inch cheek riser helps ensure I can retain a solid cheek weld even with the added optic height. This is essential for fast follow-up shots and finding your dot after sprinting or shooting from strength positions. I opted to go with a dot and magnifier combo over an LPVO or a fixed prism with a piggyback red dot on this build. This combo offers incredible versatility while keeping your eye box in the same position, whether magnified or not. I'm a fan of piggybacked red dots as well as candid red dots all the same. But having a repeatable eye box no matter what is a nice feature for sure. The LP1's insanely bright circle dot provides fast target acquisition for close quarters engagements while the magnifier quickly transforms it into a capable range optic. The center dot is a 2 MOA dot and remains very crispy whether magnified or not. If the donut of death isn't your thing, you can toggle the optic to be a circle only with no dot or simply the 2 MOA dot. I prefer the classic circle dot combo though. Prior to the LP1, I had the Vortex UH1 holographic optic mounted in its place. And while I'm a big fan of the Huey, the battery life in it stinks. I know holographic optics are a different technology entirely, but when I saw that the battery life on the Promethean was 20,000 hours compared to the Huey's 1,500 hours, I immediately had to get my hands on one and see what it was all about. And while Lead and Steel was kind enough to send over one for review, I bought an additional one at full price, a refurb off their website, with my own cash for my AP5 as well. It's a great optic, I'm so glad I decided to give it a shot, and if I need a red dot moving forward, I'll likely be rocking an LP1 from here on out. On top of all that, getting to know Ahmad and Ash over at Lead and Steel has been awesome. Good peeps, definitely go check them out, give them some love, and tell them Bargain Ben sent you. Now, if I've somehow survived beyond the 20,000 hour battery life of the LP1, I could pull it off because it comes with a QD mount on the side, as well as pull off the Unity flip to center magnifier because it also has a QD mount, and that would leave my Scalarworks peak fixed rear sight to be used in a pinch. It can see right over the Unity fast riser and I'm still able to use my front post. If it was a Last of Us type scenario and I had no way to re-up my batteries, I could pull off everything electronic and still run my rifle as a bare bones iron sight AR without hassle. I also added the Law Tactical Folding Stock Adapter to this build. This nifty little accessory lets you maintain a compact package, perfect for stowing away or carrying it more comfortably. If I know I'm going to be hiking for a bit, I'll fold the stock, cinch my sling up tight and I can tuck the rifle under my arm. It makes moving around more comfortable and especially when I kneel down to pick up stuff, I'm not digging my barrel into the ground every time. And it does make the overall package a bit smaller without having to worry about NFA paperwork either. Check this out two 16 inch barreled carbines in one vault case. One bullpup to the other folded. It's the little ways it's handy, you know? Law Tactical now also makes a bolt carrier that lets you fire the weapon while the stock is folded. So if that's something you're into, I'm pretty sure you can make it happen. For me though, the folded feature has always been way more for travel or long hikes in comparison. And the added weight of the folder actually helps balance out the weight of running a light and a laser towards the end of the rifle. It also adds a couple inches of length of pull, which when paired with the Magpul SLS stock with the Ape Defense Cheek Riser, is a perfect setup for me to run fully collapsed. 
I've equipped this build with a well tool LH18 low lumen high candela weapon light to ID targets even at fairly great ranges. It's only a 630 lumen light, but it comes in at a whopping 175,000 candela. This means IDing targets at a few hundred meters away is still no problem. Whereas the light I run on my AR pistol, the well tool LH8, is a high lumen low candela light, which gives it a wide wash with less throw. It's great for clearing rooms, way better for the AR pistol. The well tool lights are compatible with Surefire switches and end caps. And I've chosen to run the DS SR07 pressure pad that also has the toggle on end cap for the back of the light. This makes it easy to activate the light whether you're using your dominant hand with the pressure pad or if you're reaching around and using the toggle to turn it on and off with your non-dominant hand. I'm also running the Hollow Sun 117 IR infrared aiming laser for use with night vision goggles. For the lower, I've gone with the Aero Precision M4E1 enhanced lower. The oversized trigger guard and flared magwell are great, and I love the fact that the magazine release is installed with an Allen key instead of roll pins. It just makes installing the lower parts kit into the lower slightly less tedious. For the safety, I decided to go with a 45 degree throw, and I also went with the SCAR end caps from Magpul. I think they look awesome and they work really well being a little shorter with these lock grip panels that I'm running on the Driven Arms Co. CZ grip adapter. This adds the CZ shadow pistol grip to your AR and it feels really good. I'm running the lock thin bogies grip panels and they're super aggressive. They're metal and they're on a metal grip handle so the texturing is really aggressive which I love. The best part of it is, if that's not your thing, you can slap on a set of wood panels on there or whichever grip panels has caught your eye, really. You could even go full-on skeletonized and run it slick. There's no wrong option with this thing, and I think it really ties the rifle together. Well, let's hit the range. Can't beat that. That one sucks. But if you're not making yourself suck every once in a while, you're missing the point.
Let's zoom out a bit and take a look at the whole build. We have an A2 birdcage muzzle device mounted on a 16 inch barreled Palmetto State Freedom Upper, the VL Tour Cas V M Lock handguard with a Well Tool LH18 weapon light, a Hollow Sun 117 IR infrared aiming laser, and the Onyx Arms stubby vertical grip mounted to the handguard. A Unity Tactical Fast Riser up top with the lead and steel LP1 red dot. A Vortex 3x magnifier riding in the Unity Tactical FTC Omni flip to center mount. And behind that we have a Scalar Works Peak rear fixed iron sight. Inside the upper is a VL Tour 556 charging handle as well as the Stag Nitride bolt carrier in tow. At the rear of the rifle is the Law Tactical Folding Stock Adapter, the Aero Precision Enhanced Buffer Tube Kit, and a Magpul SLS stock with an Ape Defense 1 inch cheek riser. Inside the lower is a Rise Armament Rave 140 trigger, a CMMG lower parts kit, and the Strike Industries Enhanced Magazine release. And one of my favorite little additions, the 45 degree SCAR styled Magpul safety selector. Finally, the most recent addition to the rifle, the Driven Arms Co. CZ grip adapter with lock thin bogies grip panels. Now, some might argue about the weight of a setup like this. It comes in at 10 and a half pounds as it's currently laid out, but it feels very agile in my opinion. Because the cast V doesn't extend all the way out to the end of the barrel, you're not tempted to mount the light in the laser way out there. Mounting that gear towards the center of the rifle keeps the rifle feeling nimble. The added weight of the law folding adapter and the SLS stock really does help balance out the rifle. But if you're concerned with a 10 pound rifle feeling heavy, you've probably got more pressing physical concerns. Before we wrap up, let's take a moment to reflect on our second amendment rights. Being responsible and well-trained firearms owners is an essential part of preserving those rights. It's not just about having the tools, it's about understanding and respecting the responsibilities that come with them. If you own a firearm or desire to own a firearm, get training, and take the time to actively hone your skills. No matter your level of expertise, there's always room to improve. If you can't get to the range that often, dry fire train at home more often. No one's going to put in the reps for you, and there's only one way to get better. You know what it is. And there you have it, folks. My general purpose rifle build. Let me know what you think of this build in the comments down below. Be sure to follow Bargain Bin Tactician on Instagram for more photo sets and behind the scenes content. Also, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and share this content with your friends. Every share goes farther than you guys could imagine. Thanks for joining me today, and stay tuned for the next video. Until next time, Bargain Bin out.